Hey guys, haven't done a setup like this in a little while, uh, not since season 15, but uh, I asked you guys to give me your comments about Swan Song, and you did, um, definitely, for the 2 Minutes to Midnight review. Uh, and first off, before we get into these, thank you to everyone who has watched the video, thanks to everyone who has commented on the video, thank you to everyone who's liked the video. Um, to any who have shared it, if anyone has done that, thank you as well. The reception for it has been really, really good. Um, it's going to delay the review of the season by a week, um, but I, I, this is going to be so long. And I only just got back from Bag End, which I'll have to talk about in a few days. Uh, the first off, the one thing I realized once I had, uh, once I watched it for the um, the premiere was that it didn't get a rating. But it's a seven out of seven. It's a guaranteed thing. But I just realized that I didn't do that. Um, the second thing is, uh, for those who did comment about it, I'm um, sorry again that I had to put that stupid boob tube filter over it. I literally have no idea how other channels don't run into this issue because it wasn't a, ma a means of monetization at first. Like I wanted to have the video have some sort of profit off of it, if that be like pennies, but it was just not getting it blocked either from around the world or on phone. The phone one was the one that I was just so combative with. I put up 10 different versions. Eventually at one point I reached this uh, roadblock where I actually couldn't upload anything anymore for 24 hours. I've never run into that issue before. In my entire time of being on YouTube, I have never run into that issue. And that's how many times it just kept up re-uploading, fixing one thing, re-uploading, finding another thing to fix. So for those of you who stuck around and watched the whole video and w and whatever, whatever, thank you. Thank you so much. It was a labor. <laughs> I think I probably put like a good three days into just trying to get it uploaded. It was ridiculous. Either way, that's it. Now you guys get now on to the comment reading. Um, I'm very excited to read what you guys have to say. This video will be quite long, so that's why there's probably going to be no season review this week. It'll probably be next week. Um, but I uh, hope you guys stick around for that next week. Um, and then just one little preface, Joe, I will be uh, reading your uh, post that you did on, on the Patreon page. He was having issue, he couldn't put it on YouTube for some reason, uh, but yours is last, because yours is a tome. <laughs> but no, no disrespect, Just it's the longest one, so it's definitely going to go at the end. But either way, I hope you guys enjoyed this reading, so let's get into it. It's going to take a while, so... Well, let's just get started. This one's first one here is from Sivian. A swan song. It's hard to find anything wrong with this episode. Every moment, every scene, every piece of dialogue, it just works so well. I remember when I watched this episode for the first time, I locked the door, turned off everything, started to watch this episode, and it was perfect. This episode is one of the best, uh, is one of those examples when you can feel like it can't be any better. 100% agree. I love how they concluded Dean and Sam's arcs, and one sacrifices himself because that of what he did last season, but on the other hand, the other starts living a normal apple pie life. It's pretty much like Iron Man and Captain America. Sam, I let Lucifer out, I'm, I've got to put him back in. I like how Castiel's arc concluded. Also, I love the first scene that sets the whole point of the show. There is no destiny. The ass butt moment is also great. The moment where Dean comes to the cemetery has one of the best songs in the entire show. Not only that, but I believe that if there is if there is a series finale, people will still talk about Chuck's character and wonder if he is a god. And also, I freaking love Chuck's monologue at the end. So good. So what does it all add up to? Hard to say, but for me, it was I'd say this was a test for Sam and Dean. And I think they did all right. Up against good, evil, destiny, and God himself. They made their own choice, and they chose family. And, well, isn't that the whole point? The episode climax where Lucifer beats the shit out of Dean makes me cry every time. It's gonna be okay, Sammy. I'm not gonna leave you. I'm not gonna leave you. 100%. Like, that part gets to me every time when I watch this uh, episode. In the end, I want to say... In the end, I want to say that if the show concluded here, it would have been even better than the Breaking Bad finale for me. But I still f like that the show continued because we saw some other amazing episodes. I watched this episode 10 times and I still have the same emotions. 10 out of 10, 100 out of 100, 7 out of 7, 5 out of 5, etc. Now, to say it's better than Breaking Bad's, uh, like Breaking Bad, like the overall, that show is just a continued narrative. Um, it's probably also kind of a contemplation into why I don't enjoy any any of Supernatural as much after season five. 
the and that's kind of its own creation because it was a season by season storyline you can't they didn't really know they didn't have any room to create a continuing narrative like they could maybe drop little tidbits here and there but in the actual sense of a continued narrative nothing from season 6 to season 15 has any as much pertinence as anything that happened between season 1 and season 5 there's nowhere near as much connectivity and that's why swan song just has that massive effect on people this one's from nikos uh swan song we are finally here this is the best episode of the show my personal number one favorite and eric kripke's magnum opus the perfect ending for the show this episode was originally intended to be the ending of the show but robert singer decided to milk it twice and even though i binge the show i can see it the end this is the end game material the accumulation of biblical of the biblical apocalypse the ultimate battle this episode has the best acting the best direction and of course the most emotional moments in the series now, um, just one little pause i like steve boyum i think he did a really good job with this episode but admittedly in my heart i wanted kim manners to do this episode so badly but obviously he had passed away in, in, in season four but just imagine how good this episode like it's already fantastic but imagine it could have been one level higher if Kim Manners was still with us at that time. Even though I am hardened uh, uh, up and I keep my emotions in check, I cried five times in this show. Supernatural has the distinction to make me cry twice, one of which is at the ending and the fact that Dean has to live his life without Sam. But it was a necessary sacrifice for the good of humanity that the brothers fully accept and that's why we love these characters despite their flaws. They're willing to give up their lives for people they don't even know. They weren't a bunch of whiny selfish brats that Andrew Dad made them. They were two brothers that loved each other and accepted their responsibility. I just love everything about swan song and there's nothing more to say other than i can't figure out i can't figure i didn't figure out that chuck was god at his final moments but i accepted that he was now that i've seen the show and now that i've the, the uh, now that this is question and i know that this question is going to be asked so here it is would i have liked the show to end here no i am not going to be that guy that thrusts uh, the rest of the seasons because of they were not as good as the first five i never understood that kind of logic if something is not as good as the thing that they were watching previously but still good nonetheless does it not make it good or worthy of even hate to me it's a no because i get some really great stuff later on in the jeremy carver era yep no 100 percent jeremy carver brought the show back especially with season eight um the episode where dean almost gets killed by castiel that was i felt like the that was a turning mark and the show going back to some good quality. Season 9, bleh, or more so 10. The Demon Dean era I thought was kind of boring <laughs> considering what it could have been. If Kripke's era is a Marvel Infinity Saga, then Jeremy Carver's era is Marvel Phase 4 done right. He found a way to make the continuation of the show relevant and give us something, to me at least, equal as epic as the as those first five seasons including my third favorite season of the show season 11. so yeah i am glad the show went on however and this is a double-edged sword if there was only one way to spare us from the andrew dab era then i would have gladly taken it but last and not least can you answer me this if you know this was the final shot of a sam re a reshoot because the show was renewed or is it just my imagination to oh to me it always felt like a reshoot dean and lisa in the house disappears after it cuts to sam no i think it was intentional um w one thing that uh, joe's going to bring up in his comment is how that they renewed they were going to continue they made the announcement back in february apparently of uh, 2010 so no it wasn't a reshoot um i imagine they might have gone back and forth on how to end it but no unfortunately it is not a reshoot now we got Harry Williams here. Swan Song is my all-time favorite episode of the show. It would have been a perfect ending to the show. Loved every uh, the show loved every second. I love it when Sam says yes, and you think it's going to work, and then he goes to the edge of the door to the cage and says, "Sammy is long gone. I'm just messing with you." I remember when I first watched it, thinking that that monologue when it says "Yellow Light uh, has been preparing Sam." Oh, Yellow Eyes has been preparing Sam the whole time. Everyone he knew was a demon was brilliant. Then the whole pit uh, with the two angels talking about before they fight and Dean interrupting is so good. I love that the show started with Sam and Dean and it would have ended with both of them. The bit where Lucifer is beating Dean up gives me chills, especially at the bit of the light reflects off the car and you see those memories that Sam remembers. Brilliant episode. Seven out of seven had me on the edge of my seat. 
I imagine the part where Dean is getting the shit kicked out of him is going to come up a lot, and it's probably the most emotional element of the show for me. That and the memory. The, the, the... I wanted that to be in the review so badly. I wanted the whole bit, because it is. It's probably one of the best montages a show has ever done. And it didn't have any music, it didn't have anything sappy or anything, it just had wind in the background. Now this one's from Aaron Drake. What can be said about Swan Song that or hasn't already? It was somewhat sad that after 10 years, nothing really came close. This really should have been where it ended. I'm a fan of the later seasons, but without any roadmap uh, for where the show was going, hampered uh, the show in the long run. Now, going back also to Nikos' comment, yeah, like, I'm not saying that anything that happened after season 5 isn't good. Like, there are some goods. There's some ups, there's some downs. There's some decent in there. The last 7 out of 7 I gave was even in season 12, and so that was an Andrew Dabb era 7. But in terms of the long run of how everything went in the end, sorry, I think I'm unfocused. Um, I definitely feel that there could have been, I wish there would have been a more of a connected roadmap in terms of the seasons after season five. But as I said, they didn't have the liberty to know. So imagine the absolute struggle for this show. It's why it became so serial in terms of it's like a serial, like a serial show. It couldn't connect it couldn't keep a consistency for that reason because of how the show was put together so that would have been a fucking writing nightmare it's if you want an example of it done very very fucking poorly riverdale they don't know what they're doing they don't even know the actors don't know the writers don't know everyone on that show i've said i've worked with has told me that it's just it's off the like they make this shit off the cuff it's just that bananas and people still eat it up so they're like Ooh, you know it's working might as well even though that's apparently behind the scenes it's an absolute fucking nightmare to work on that show uh everything came to an end uh, i'm coming back to the comment here everything came to a head in this episode sam and dean's character arcs dean finally letting sam go which is something later seasons botched because that was good development with dean realizing sam was an adult and capable to make his own destiny five seasons come to an end uh to one of the best closures in television history in my opinion the stakes are high and somehow our guys come through I won't really say anything more because I don't want to add, I don't know what to add. And if I had to nitpick anything in this episode, it's kind of the useless murders of Bobby and Castiel. If they were going to bring them back on the same episode, I need I needed them out of the way for Sam uh, Fire versus Dean. They could have been knocked unconscious. And a shout out to Chuck here. We've all discussed uh, the verbatim uh, we've all discussed verbatim his villainous turn so we won't go there but i knew he was god as soon as he disappeared and i always loved that he helped behind the scenes in plain sight so that in a way he wasn't passive but also not interfering to the point that he could say he was violating anyone's free will great stuff and the monologue about the impala while when it first aired i was kind of confused why that was eating up so much screen time but it was a nice love letter to one of the most iconic elements of the show without feeling tacky or too tongue-in-cheek Best Supernatural episode ever with the Carry On My Wayward Son recap. Uh, going to the nitpick, I think you needed to have some loss. You needed to feel some kind of like... It already was a pretty hopeless situation, so having uh, Castiel and, and Bobby die made you go... <gasps> like It's what helps add that oof to it. Yeah, sure, it's kind of weird that they just come back immediately, but I think that's a resolution. You couldn't just leave them dead. Um if you were going to continue the show. If they weren't going to continue the show, I almost think that they totally would have died. I think so. I think they would have stayed dead. That would have been crazy. Um, and then... Uh, I didn't... I had a feeling that Chuck was God, but I also like that they didn't 100% answer it. That ambiguity is always one of my favorite elements of storytelling when done right. When you don't fully give people the answer, you, let, you leave them enough for them to kind of stir in it and wonder what they're doing so i always like that and all right a comment here from cookie 2118 swan song i really love this episode but there is one thing i want to mention that brings this episode down a little i'm willing to let bobby and castiel to bet bet yeah 
there, there we go. I'm willing to bet Bobby and Castiel would have stayed dead and Sam's sacrifice wouldn't uh, be temporary until next season starts up. That was the only thing that let me down in this episode. All the sacrifices and the losses the guys uh, suffer were quickly reversed. I understand that the reasons behind it, these four misfits are our heroes and are for our show to continue, they need to be around. But I still, it still undermined the emotional impact. Apart from that, I can't find any other faults. Also, the original ending with Dean is perfect in my eyes. Throughout the seasons, it was pretty clear that given the freedom, Dean would love to have a family and a normal life, like in a what if and what should never be. Oh, what is and what should never be, and the kids are all right. He just never thought it was possible for him. His heaven includes peanut butter sandwiches with a crust cut off. So I think in an ideal world, he would have loved to have settled down with Lisa, and he did that. The other great thing about Swan Song was that it couldn't have been inter interpreted as an open and uh, ending even if the show hadn't returned the following season. Meanwhile, the subsequent finales have a clear have clearly been set up for fans to return for the next season premiere. This was what made these episodes carry a fair bit of emptiness to them. Overall, I give this episode a 6 out of 7 <laughs> gallons of demon blood. That's great. Um, yeah, like I said, I, I feel that they needed to bring them back because they were going to continue the show. But, mm, yeah, no, it, it, it sort of can feel that way, but as I said, endings, and as this episode says, endings are hard, and I feel that they still do the best with what they have, even though they can't, you know, do it the 100% ending way. Uh, got a coming from Wabbit, one, two, three. Wow, what an amazing finale. It makes you, it really makes you look back at the whole show and just shows you how everything was so well connected. Sure, the final scene was a bit cheap, but even that could be forgiven. This would have been my second or third favorite finale of any show, but they just couldn't help themselves. No, they couldn't. I've uh, got a comment here from Angela Holmes. Let's just open up yours here. Swan Song is definitely one of the best episodes in the series. This episode came full circle to me. I really love the narration of Chuck in this episode, and you can't and you can tell that Dean is scared of losing Sam because he has so, lost so many people that he really cared about in his life. His mother, his father, Ellen, Joe. I wasn't surprised that Sam forced Dean to promise him not to break him out of the cage. Jared did a great job as Lucifer. I really enjoyed seeing the conversation between Lucifer and Sam in the mirror. It's one of the best parts of this episode, definitely. And I enjoyed seeing Michael and Lucifer talk at the graveyard. You can definitely tell that their relationship is similar to Sam and Dean, especially when it came to their father's... I'm glad that Dean decides to stop, try and stop the battle between them. Uh, love seeing Castiel. Call Michael ass, calling Michael Assbutt and set Michael on fire. But I was sad seeing him get killed by Lucifer. And what I didn't expect to happen was Michael also ending up in the cage. I really love the talk between Castiel and Dean in the car. I was glad that Dean went to Lisa and left hunting, uh, left the hunting life he definitely deserved. Uh, I st uh, deserved it. I started wondering if Chuck was God when he vanishes in the chair. Carry On didn't come anywhere close to being as great as Swan Song, even though I enjoyed the other seasons after season five. Uh, the show should have just ended here. Yes. Now, um, yeah, again, pretty much. Like, I'm curious to see. I wish if there is anyone, like, I, I don't know if it's a special feature. I don't imagine it would be. But I would love if there was one question I could ever go to one of these cons and if Kripke was there, and if it hasn't already been asked of him, I would ask him, like, if you knew season five was your ending, you, like, the show wasn't going on, what would you have done differently? Like, what are the little slight subtleties you would have changed if there was any that you had uh, planned to be changed? And we got Shannon Miller here, one of my Patreon supporters. Swan Song. I love the cl this climax of the hero's journey. These guys are spectacular in their bravery and commitment, able to do nothing else. Dean is determined to be there for his brother, if only to stand by his side, while Sam furthers the cause to save the world. Chuck obviously felt the same way. I love that he shined a ray of light on the toy soldier which revealed Sam's memories of the love and innocence allowing him to wrestle free of Lucifer. Uh, the story of Sam and Dean was often punctuated with the explicit understanding of Dean's need to protect Sam considering his job in season two, etc. It's also been uh, satirized by Zachariah. Not uh, sure it needed to be punctuated again in this episode. My objection isn't that so much as almost too casual conversation about Sam's w worthiness to sacrifice himself and the strength to carry it out. Losing your brother isn't merely Sam's death and the sub and subsequent uh, Dean's subsequent grief. 
the grief. It's Sam's soul doomed to an eternity in hell with Lucifer. Okay, I, w I will say that he kind of casually talks about that idea. Like, you know, you'd think you'd be... Uh, eh, maybe. Uh, that's more so in the episode before, right? Um, and also, I think at this, this point, they don't have any other option. They don't. They would have nothing. Because we're not going into the Andrew Ta Dab era of MacGuffins at that point yet. I've got one here from Ron H. A fiddle of gold against your soul. I can't believe it's finally here. Swan Song is the best episode of Supernatural, hands down. It is has all built to this with five seasons awesome seasons of storytelling and if i asked and if asked i would tell anyone interested in starting this series to only watch the first five seasons then stop with it like the last minute of this episode as to not see sam standing in the street now funny enough actually i actually tell people that the same thing i say like once you get to this point like a minute before the ending like the last 10 seconds really this is where you should consider whether you want to continue this or not <laughs> because the first five seasons are all connected everything afterwards is kind of making up as a go uh, making it up as it goes pick the show back up after a break or treat it as a series finale because it is infinitely better than the show's real finale where to start dean agreeing to go with sam's plan and showing some growth he has gone through and understanding is really the only way good thing dean knows where lucifer is and a nice payoff to what we were told in the devils in detroit i absolutely love mark's performance when juiced up sam and dean confront lucifer just to find out that he's known the plan the big plan in his game to try with one last taunt from lucifer sam said yes dean throws the rings on the walls and opens the cage it's funny because the command to open and close the cage are burnt into my brain for some reason the only thing i thought was weird in this episode is lucifer messing with dean getting up and walking towards the cage and you see sam's face chains so i always wondered if lucifer was lying in that moment or what he then proceeds to close the cage takes the rings and taunts dean one more time before making his his leave I feel that that's kind of a part of what the Lucifer is. He's always a taunter. He's always kind of, um, you know, playing with people. But yeah, there's a possibility that Sam might have had control, um, if slightly. Uh, also, it's dramatic. It's dramatic as fuck. <laughs> then one of my favorite looks from Dean in the series as he turns around with tears in his eyes, hands on his head, feeling destroyed from what just happened. You can't help but feel the weight of what he is going to do. What is he going to do now? Now let's talk about Lucifer and Sam's body. Jared is absolutely crushing it with the back and forth performance of Lucifer, seeing Sam, uh, he's being uh, led down this path his whole life, and that we need a bond, they need a bonding session where they violently murder all the demons that helped Sam get there in the first place. I love how distinctly different Lucifer is and how he feels a bit more flushed out than what we saw him wearing Sam to prom in the future. Shout out to Chuck for giving us back, uh, giving us a backstory on the car earlier in the episode, as well as dropping the location of the title flight. How can you not love the conversation between Michael and Lucifer in the cemetery? Honestly, I agree with Lucifer. Fuck the plan, just walk off the board together, even though it is Lucifer not taking responsibility for the actual evil that he has done. Jake Abel does a good job, a great job uh, with Michael in the series. If only they didn't do him dirty later on. One of the things that makes this so great is the weight you feel during basically the whole episode but especially the stuff in the cemetery it feels like these guys are up to, about to destroy the world fighting and ah uh, it's so tense uh, ah so tense and awesome you can contrast this with later in the series just the writers being like i guess they fight punch punch fight over <laughs> Oh, the fight choreography in the show got so bad later on. So, no, uh, yeah, when they did the season fight, when they did the, the fight between the two of them in season 13, I thought it was such a joke. I, I was not impressed with that. Dean makes an epic entrance, and I find it hilarious that Michael and Lucifer just stand there and watch, probably both rolling their eyes. With a Molotov cocktail of holy oil, Michael is temporarily taken off the board, and you get to see Lucifer legit angry for messing with his big, bro big brother. In probably my favorite show of force, Lucifer snaps his fingers and Castile just fucking explodes. A trope the show would, in would entirely overuse in the future. An irritated Lucifer dr throws Dean into the car, and Bobby... Trying to protect him, Dean gets his neck broken. Lucifer starts absolutely pummeling Dean in the face, which, by the way, is some of the 
some awesome makeup work. Dean's face looks completely messed up. And again, they would try and do this later on in the series, and it's almost laughable. It's like, ah, oh, they're doing that again. You then get a great montage of the brothers in this show uh, as Sam wins control of from Lucifer. Uh, going back to the makeup, actually, I would say when Dean dies at the end of season nine, I think that's pretty good makeup, too. Um... Then you get the oh shit feeling he's going to go do it when Michael comes back and they both fall into the cage and the day is seemingly saved. I love Chuck's monologue. Feels like it's Kripke talking directly to the audience. These first five seasons are Kripke's masterpiece and are for sure the best this series has to offer. There are good things about some of the later stuff in that show, in that in the stuff that is good and worth checking out. But I recommend giving it some space after the first five. Uh, first five, if you do check it out, Supernatural continues to do something that is extremely important to me, even though I didn't go through watching it as much anymore. These characters will always have a special place in my heart. 7 out of 7. Uh, and then we got a very simple one here from Hollow Man. I love the part where Dean tries to talk shit to Lucifer only to stop talking because after Lucifer... <laughs> completely after Luc Lucifer gives him a stare. <laughs> Alright, we got one from Horror Master here. Uh, Horror Master 13. What can I possibly say that hasn't already been said about this episode? Swan's song is beautifully written, filmed, acted, emotional roller coaster of an episode, and a great ending to season five, and would have been a great ending to Supernatural if Robert Singer hadn't been too greedy, too bad he was. Everything is amazing in this finale. Eric Kripke and the director, Steve Boyum, should have been proud of themselves. It is tragic, exciting, brutal, and heartbreaking. There are three things that make me cry. The ending of Terminator 2, <laughs> Judgment Day. The ending of The Green Mile. Ooh. That is, that is definitely one. And this episode of Supernatural. The part where Lucifer beats the shit out of Dean and then sees the green toy soldier which is stuck in the ashtray of the Impala and suddenly we get flashbacks to the boys when they were kids all the way through seasons one and five. It all comes back like a flood and suddenly Dean is, drop it, is dropped and Lucifer stands back only it isn't Lucifer anymore, it's Sam. He looks at Dean and Dean looks up at him. That sad look Sam gives his brother and then tells Dean that everything is going to be alright. Sam throws the rings on the hole. Uh, the cage is open and it blues a, uh, then Michael shows up and they both fall into the pit. The hole closes, leaving Dean lying broken and bloody against the Impala and the screen goes dark. This whole part, man, just thinking about it makes me sad. I also thought the voiceovers from Chuck in this episode gave the finale an even more special feel than normal. It's like the story is coming to an end. I have been on Re I've been on Reddit and other social media platforms where Swan Song was discussed, and some people and some people wrote that they wouldn't have find it satisfying if it truly had been the end here because it's too dark and sad. I don't know why a sad ending is a bad thing. This, the way Supernatural was going in season one through five, you knew the boys weren't going to end up entirely happy, and the thing is that Sam and Dean broke the world with their actions. How many people suffered and died when Dean sold his soul because he couldn't let Sam go? And how many more su suffered and died because Sam couldn't go uh, let go of Dean after uh, Dean ended up in hell and continued uh, hunting for revenge? Sure, they thought. Uh, sure, they thought they were going to do, they were doing good, but tell the, that to anyone who was possessed or killed by demons and angels during the apocalypse. Not to mention the release of the four horsemen and the horror Babylon, who killed a lot of people. And yes, we you can say they were manipulated by angels and demons and like pawns in a chess game, but they were practically walked into being pawns. No one manipulated Dean or John into selling their soul and breaking the first seal. And all Ruby did was encourage Sam's already single-minded desire for revenge, for vengeance, and thereby making him break the final seal where he killed Lilith. What we see in the Swan Song are the consequences of Sam and Dean's actions. Dean, being desperate to find, despite finding a new family with Lisa and Ben, is forever now separated from Sam, even in death. And Sam is punished forever being in the cage with Lucifer and Michael. It's a bittersweet and sad ending. If Supernatural had ended here, it would have been a satisfying conclusion, in my opinion. If I had to nitpick one thing about Suwon Song, is at the last shot, Sam appearing. Considering what happens to the show after season five, I hate this scene now. Seriously, when I rewatched this episode, I skipped the this, this scene, fast forwarded to the credits. The last shot is of Swan Song should have been Dean, Lisa, and Ben sitting at the dinner table, then the long shot of the house, and then cut to credits. That would have been perfect. All in all, I give Swan Song a 7 out of 7. It's easily the best episode of Season 5, and in my opinion, the best episode of Supernatural. It truly deserved the highest rating on uh, on IMDb. P.S. I will not rewatch Season 6, 7, 8, and 10. Sorry, Jeremy, but I just can't do it. You know what, man? That's fine. Like The fact that you were along for this, 
I'm happy for that. If you do kind of sit around and kind of watch along, maybe. I, I do have some interesting takes, especially with certain episodes. There's going to be a few here and there that are like, you know, those are good episodes. So I'm hoping if you come along for that, that'd be great. But otherwise, I understand. Uh, binge watcher fanatic here. Swan Song is still, in my opinion, the series finale, and in my thoughts, the rest of the is just a spinoff. Swan Song, I gave a 10 out of 10, but if Supernatural ended even in season 11, I would have preferred season 11 as the show's second series finale as well, because we can see Jeremy Carver planned season 11 as the end of the show. He did have a planned ending for it, and you can see it because. There's literally nothing they could have done after that. When they hold, the biggest issue with season 12, like all critiques about Andrew Dabb aside, he was going in with two broken legs going into season 12. They had already beaten Lucifer. They had already beaten the literal second being of existence aside from God. There was nowhere else they could have gone in terms of like the writing. It, it sucked. The show's writing sucked, but yeah, like. Either way, he couldn't have done anything. Like, I'll give Andrew Dabb that credit. He was fucked from the beginning. <laughs> Good job. Uh, now we got uh, K Mars here. Good job, mate. You have accomplished your goal of reviewing the show. Definitely earned your king size Snickers bar. Yes, I have. I'm going to go get one after this. This is the episode that tied the show, the whole show together. The paybacks felt earned and deserved. The ending that had weight behind the actions of characters and plot lines. One that you that left you feeling emotional uh, emotions other than disappointment and uh, deflation. These uh, this series finally worked well for me because God was not in the story as the main focus, but rather an observer to his creations and with humans proving that they possess love and loyalty to each other more than him. No, that's a very good comment, actually. Hope you stick around for others. I like that one. Oh, got one more from Hollow Man. The not-so-subtle part about endings being hard is great, but also very true. Many shows uh, completely fell apart at, even after a few episodes, but before before the end. Shows wish they could have uh, could end as bittersweet as Swan Song, damn near perfect. In retrospect of hearing Chuck's narration about an endings makes me kind of sad as he's borderline screaming into the camera, <laughs> uh, saying, boy... This sure would be good time to quit, <laughs> to call it quits, huh? As if it's the people working on the show know that they won't be able to pull off an ending as good as this again. Pretty much. Like, they got close with season 11, but not that close. And this is the last one on the page here of uh, the YouTube page from Souvenir Success. This may be an unpopular opinion, but I actually prefer the ending to carry on the, bro the Brothers in Heaven to the ending of Swan Song. Although you already know which is the superior episode as a whole. Okay, glad we got that out of the way. Swan Song ages much more gracefully. This whole the whole crew put in a lo a lot of effort into making this ending to season five the masterpiece that it is, and it holds up. The open ended conclusion here begs the question: Did God bring Sam back, or did Lucifer escape the cage somehow? It's a good cliffhanger, similar to how many to how many horror movies end, a genre this show was tried to emulate from day one. That's not. A, that's a good observation right there. Uh, I prefer to think that it was intentional and not a scene added on because of season six's renewal. One of the best elements here is the glimpses of the brothers' lives outside of hunting through the eyes of the Impala. It builds that final confrontation well because, to be honest, it would have been easy for Sam taking back the wheel from Lucifer to come off as cheesy, but it doesn't. In th uh, episode 18 of season 5 Dean sarcastically responds to a question about how they're they're planning to beat the devil well we're planning uh, on the power of love to save us and that's literally the route the show goes but it works uh, because it's so well executed you don't think of it that way uh, number two, goodbye Lucifer is a multifaceted, intense, intriguing character. A moment of silence, everyone. Oh, I know exactly what you're fucking talking about. I'm glad the show did not end here, but admittedly, it is the best ending point the show ever got. Fuck, you know exact. I know exactly what you're talking about with Lucifer. My God, what a char what a what a disastrous disastrous interpretation of a character. Season 11's not bad because there is some bits between him and God which I thought were really funny. And just that kind of that, that kind of wrap up with that character, but everything after season 11, oh, I guys, I will always use Jade uh, oh, my dog just coughed there. I will always use Jade Way's uh, interpretation of what happened to Lucifer is that he became the herpes of supernatural. 
her comment is dead on. And now, Joe, we finally are coming to yours, your multi-paragraph thing here. Uh, this Joe is one of my uh, top-tier uh, Patreon supporters, and I have appreciated his uh, both him and Shannon Miller. I've, I've appreciated both of their guys' comments and their uh, uh, and their assistance and their help, as well as every every other Patreon supporter I have. Uh, thank you very much. But all right, Joe, let's. Let's get into your tomb. I will preface what you started here. I'm hoping this comment isn't going to be unbearably long for your discussion video of the episode, but let's get started. And you told everyone not to hold back and what they thought, so I'm not going to hold back whatsoever. And by God, you don't. <laughs> All right, here we go. Supernatural Season 5, Episode 22, Swan Song, happens to be my second favorite season finale. This is where everyone brings up where the show was planned for being over. However, during rough times in my child, in my teenage years, movies and TV shows where the only thing I could really ever call a friend or something that made me feel important or validated for my existence. I had zero friends and zero support from my family. I apologize and I'm sorry that you went through that. So you... Uh, so you can imagine how much my depression really impacted me. Supernatural became my favorite TV show of all time because Sam and Dean and those close to them represented the family that I always needed and always wanted in my own life. Plus, I really love every episode in this season. I don't expect anyone to ha be the same as I do in this regard. This, the reason I get background to this is because on February 16, 2010, it was announced that Supernatural would return for a sixth season. That was 86 days. I was one of the very few fo vocal about the consistently rece about re consistently researching articles about the show from day one on Google with any scraps of news about it. The show renewal announcement was just five days from the 14th episode of Supernatural, and the show came back from its hiatus on March 25th. It really made watching the, fi the last five episodes of season five interesting to m for me to say the least. I almost didn't want to believe that the show was renewing for a sixth season, but that was then validated even more when the promo of the season finale simply said in subtext of with a trailer, the, the, the end is now, and underneath gave the time zone of when the episode would premiere on Thursday, 7 p.m. Mountain Time, and it started, uh, stated season finale. Uh, I would then study, I'll admit, actually, first off, I actually did not read a lot of uh, any of the announcements, any kind of the background news stuff about Supernatural, especially during Season 5. Afterwards, I changed my mind, but I didn't want to spoil anything. I, I really did not want to get this finale spoiled at all, because I knew we were in for a treat. I would then study and rewatch uh, Season 5, Episode 22, over and over and over again, trying to look for clues more than the obvious cliffhanger of Sam coming back mysteriously from hell at the end of the episode. Admittedly, I was not, and still not to this day, the biggest fan of the Carry On My Wayward Son recap of Season 5. I'll always appreciate Season 1 and 10's the most. Um, oh, yeah, for Season 2's uh, recap like from Season 1 is so well done. Well, also, it chooses a great song. Uh, the tone of the episode fading in after the recap beginning with Chuck's narrating of the original story of the Chevy and Paula definitely gave an end of the era kind of feeling for the show. In one way or another, uh, uh, every time the show brought in a different showrunner from season 6, 8, and 12, it almost feels like soft reboots to the former seasons 1 through 5, and yet there were also continuations of the Judo Christian apocalypse from season 5. I really love Chuck putting emphasis on how important and how key it is that the Chevy Impala turned out to be the saving grace for Sam and Dean by stopping Michael in Lucifer's agendas. It was the one thing Lucifer didn't expect to allow Sam to gain control of his body and defeat Lucifer. I love it playing the famous Americana theme that Jake Gr uh, Gruska gave or played every time it went back to Chuck finishing his final novel of Supernatural and has played with emo uh, key emotional moments of the show overall before and after season 5. These moments that Chuck narrated really cement how Jared and Jensen play convincingly as biological brothers and shows us their ho true home that didn't need four walls to support them. One of the reasons I love season one through five is because how well it handles Sam's character. There's no doubt in my mind that Sam Winchester at his best uh, was at his best individually for his story because but I admittedly, I wasn't satisfied with Dean's arc through season one and five. The best way I can explain it without debate or telling others that they were wrong or for how they enjoy the show is that to me, it's not Dean's character to let his brother go and let him, his brother forever suffer in hell for eternity. I understand how people truly love the story about self-sacrifice, but to me personally, Sam and Dean didn't put family first, as Chuck said at the end. To me, season eight and season 10's finale uh, capture the Sam and Dean put it with each other opposed to the greater good 
and quite op opposed to literally everything else regardless of the consequences that would follow. Now, I'll definitely say that Season 8 definitely had that um, with uh, When the Angels Fell. That's probably the most heartfelt moment, I would almost say, of the entirety of everything that happens after Season 5. But the, the family idea is that they, they trust each other, that they are willing to um, kind of accept each other uh, in what they want to do. They're letting each other, they're letting, they're not trying to make decisions for the other. Uh, and then also in terms of Dean's arc, I will agree with you kind of on that. I find that uh, I, Dean was my favorite character. It's because he's kind of like, a, he is the Han Solo of this show, right? And he doesn't have as much arc. That's why I like season three so much, because it is about Dean. And it also is about Sam going through the emotions of trying to save his brother, but he ultimately fails. But yes, yeah, Sam is definitely the main character. That's why he was top build throughout the entire show. From this season finale, we expertly and beautifully craft how Sam is willing to sacrifice himself after being chess piece to Lucifer's agenda since birth and that Dean accepts Sam's choice and accepts that it's beyond his control to save Adam from Michael. Uh, again, this is quite powerful and huge for Dean to do, so given it how it's been his purpose since Sam's birth to protect him at all costs. Interesting to point out in the season 15 series finale that Sam and Dean have a role reversal. That time around, Dean was telling Sam they need to accept the natural order, and Sam needs to let Dean go. A lot of people get upset, upset with that because they think Sam is expected to go above and beyond to save Dean's life, just like how Dean has done for Sam. However, to me, Dean's death was always expected to me for him to die out hunting since season four where he talked about not wanting uh, to are expecting to grow old i don't think it's fair to really compare season 15's finale with season five uh, season finale to me better comparison would be from season 19 or uh, episode 19 of season 15 where the show's creators at the time compared it to being a series a season finale and season five's finale which to me season five wins without a dispute well, of course uh, people might say that there's a lot coming from me who has watched the show since it began and, and loves every episode in the season, but let me be clear, I don't love every episode in se uh, every season with equal value. I love them for different reasons, and I will not address that in this comment. I wouldn't expect anyone to read that analysis in one sitting. S uh, Still Cemetery, according to Kripke, was supposed to be a little bit more, to have more exposition on why it was so important to the fight uh, was there between Michael and Lucifer, but we never got that. What we do have, in fact, is that it's the same city and state of the United States of America where Sam and Dean's story began. It would have been more in-depth to me if this were where Sam and Dean once picked the fight. There was some time divided for them or something along the lines of where a lot of the family is their family is buried that's kind of the assumption i had but yes i agree there could it would have been cool just to know a little bit more about what was the significance of that cemetery what makes season five's finale so interesting is how lucifer tries pleading with michael one last time for them not to fight by telling them that god created him for who he is and his choices coming from the devil people think that's quite a ridiculous argument and that's just why season five's finale beautifully captures we still have a choice and destiny is just an agenda and that agenda ain't Angels and demons trying to set, uh, setting up Sam and Dean and falling for all the same. Uh, the the long for the longest time Sam felt like destiny took hold of, over him and regardless of the choices the Sam uh, the same outcome would arrive with him making mistakes and never being able to make amends with them. But that one look at Dean where he regains control of his body sh uh, shows he accepts what Dean has told him in the hundredth episode. So screw destiny right in the face. I say we take the fight to them and do it our way. And Sam drags himself, Lucifer, Michael, and Adam into the cage. It felt so heart wrenching to watch that. That live that live for it, for it to go to commercial break and when you see Dean's face utter and of utter brokenness when watching his brother's uh, brother enter the cage without any likelihood of them returning to the earth's surface when Castiel did return to life I thought it was, he was God all along as well when Dean asked him if he was but I was happy that Castiel told him that he was not however it did throw me off that Castiel went to Bobby's uh, body resurrecting him because by all standards Bobby's soul should have been in hell after he made the deal with Crowley or if Bobby wasn't denying the Reaper taking him to uh, to the afterlife to me that always felt like a loophole for the episode Ooh, he's got a good point here I doesn't I don't mean that after seeing season six either where we find out that Bobby is trying to convince Crowley to give his soul back 
Uh, with Bobby and Dean departing ways, I always felt more, I feel more hollow than the whole because, again, I know the show wasn't ending. Despite when Cast Dean and Castiel have a conversation in the car about Castiel returning to heaven to try and uh, help his angel siblings, it may be curious as to what season six that would be in store for him. By the end of the episode with Dean returning to Lisa, I felt it was a little forced because Dean and Lisa didn't really come close together to each other after the seasons earlier. In season three, Dean was just looking for a fling and felt heartbroken that he didn't have a child to carry as on his lineage. We do see Dean dreaming about Lisa living a normal life and having a picnic together, but even with that scene alone, doesn't convince me production team weren't planning for Dean's and Lisa to get together and that it was a more of a desperate wish for Dean not to try and go to hell. Naturally, season five. Uh, naturally, season five, episode 17's last scene was a setup for Dean and Lisa to get together at the end of the season. But I feel like it that was more of a shoehorned in, and would have loved to have that plot have a little bit more deeper exposition of them getting in a relationship rather than Dean giving a confession of where his true happiness lies with her and Ben. You would also almost think that his hap his true happiness also lies with being a brother to Sam. Then, when Sam returning unexpectedly for season 5 cliffhanger, I remember studying it, trying to determine whether it was Lucifer or Sam, and Jared Padalecki honestly perfectly nailed just how mysterious it was, and I couldn't come to an honest conclusion at the time. It's an incredible season finale, from the way that the cinematography is done, the editing, the action, set pieces, the humor, and Sam and Dean at one of the darkest times in the show was delivered almost perfectly for me. Swan Song may be the perfect finale of what a lot of our fans have wanted in the seasons would follow, would be cons considered fan fiction to them. But for me, it was just a close. It was just the close of one story done beautifully for Sam's character, and I was eager to see what more, what would, what more, <laughs> what was more in store for Supernatural. And there we go. Those are your guys' comments about this uh, season finale. Thank you guys for giving your thoughts. Uh, this is, right now, I'm running at 50 minutes, so that's going to be fun to edit. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for commenting and like and watching the video, watching the reviews, watching all of my reviews previous. And yes, I will be going on to season six. I'm probably going to hold off until January, but I still got a season five review in the best and worst coming up and then maybe i talk about what i feel i'm going into with season six and beyond but either way thank you guys so much for watching these videos thank you guys for watching my reviews i hope you enjoy the swan song review if you haven't watched it yet please do uh and if you have maybe watch it again maybe you'll see something else that i did or whatever anyways Hope you guys like this video. If you did, leave a like. And if you're interested in more, subscribe. And if you guys are interested in maybe being a Patreon supporter, uh, for instance, the gold members were able to watch the Swan Song review uh, a week, a few weeks early, because that's the kind of the stipulation that they get for supporting me. So if you guys are interested in stuff like that, certain reviews you would get to see earlier than others. So if you're interested in that, maybe check it out. My, the link for that is in the description below. Otherwise, that's it for me, guys. I'm not looking forward to editing this, but you know what? It's cool to just be able to talk with you guys once again about this show. Anyways, that's all for me. I'll see you guys later.